This time last year, no one would have guessed that a movie about a high school football player and his adopted family would turn out to be one of the year's biggest box office hits. But that's exactly what The Blind Side was. It took in nearly $300 million worldwide, earned Sandra Bullock an Oscar, and catapulted the real-life Tui family into the national spotlight. They've now written a book about their experiences. We'll talk to them live in just a moment. But first, take a look at their remarkable story. It's a Hollywood script no one would believe if it weren't true. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. A no-nonsense mama from Memphis, Tennessee, played by Sandra Bullock in The Blind Side, plucks a hard luck teenager from the mean streets and makes him her own. I just think Michael needed somebody, and it was so evident that there was nobody in his life, and to me, it just broke my heart. Leanne Tui and her husband Sean opened their hearts and their home to Michael Orr after he was left to fend for himself by a drug-addled mother. Despite his rough upbringing, the Tui saw Michael's potential, a natural talent that needed molding. And with some Tui tough love on the field... This team is your family, Michael. You have to protect them from those guys. Okay. And in the classroom, Michael overcame the odds to find success many thought was impossible. Graduating high school, playing four years at Ole Miss, and getting drafted in the first round by the Baltimore Ravens. Michael Lohr, offensive tackle, Mississippi. Anything's possible. My background is you no know, bad background, and you know people said a lot of people said I couldn't do it. You can do anything you put your mind to. It. And after the success of The Blind Side, the Tuies now want to tell their version of the story and help others give back. In their new book, they say if there is one meaning we'd like you to take from our story, it's this. The person you just walked past is the one who could change your life. So every once in a while, stop and turn around. And Sean Lee and Twitter here with us this morning. Thank you morning. for coming out. I, I love that phrase, turn around. Where did it come from? What do you mean by it? Oh, it came from her when we were passing Michael on the street. It wasn't a whisper either. <laughs> she just turned to me and, and, and we were driving in the car and she said, turn around. We really do believe that that really is, you know, our challenge is be in, in the line of the movie theater. Just turn around, talk to the person behind you. You're walking down the hallway. People just walk by people and, and they value them as they walk by. Well, turn around and meet that person. and. You'll change your, your opinion and your value of that person when you get so to know So it's not him. just about writing the check. Oh, no. It's about making that person a contact. Right. I mean, you know, the, the, the true meaning that we want people to know is, you know, it's great to write a check. It's Everyone needs money. The financial need is there. But you know what? It's more important to give of your time and of yourself and of your talents. That's what makes a difference. Um, Michael's life necessarily wouldn't have been changed if we just wrote a check. He needed our time and our attention, and that's what kids need. And there's kids falling through the cracks of this society every single day, and they need our time. And, and if you just look right beside you, get off the main street, get off the beaten path. There's Michael Lors right four blocks from us. And you know what? He almost fell through the cracks of society, and he is now a starting tackle in the NFL, extremely smart. Who knows what's out there? And, and, and the entire country. <laughs> now knows his story, now knows your story, and, and, and this is really giving you an opportunity to share this message on a much wider stage. You couldn't have said it better, and that's, you know, obviously this isn't something that we quested or probably even want, but it's something that we feel that we're in possession of and we have to do it. And people have been so wonderful to, to really get on board. I mean, you just can't imagine the letters we get on a daily basis. And it isn't people asking for things, it's people telling us what they're doing. And I think that's what the movie did, and I think that's what Michael's life has, has proven to people that, you know, because you, you couldn't have been further down than he was. And, and I don't know if you can be higher than he is now. And so the gap is what, what really interested people, and that's kind of what we said. Thank you know, you when people talk about it, why'd you do it? We just, we didn't know we really did anything. But you couldn't have imagined, no. I suppose, what difference it would end up making. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if we would, we wouldn't have done it probably. <laughs> yeah. well, has, it, has it changed your life a lot yeah. since the movie? Oh, that's a stupid question. That's why I tell people to ask that. That is a stupid question. Why is yes. that a stupid question? It's the question everybody wants to know the answer I mean, to. Sandra Bullock played you in a, mu a, a movie, and she won an Oscar, and, and, you know, and everything that happened in her personal life, and then she adopts an African-American precious baby. Yes, it changes your life and your whole family's life. So, yeah, yes. We always spend <laughs> Fridays in Central Park with George Stephens. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing's, so nothing's changed. Nothing. Yeah. But you, you have gotten pretty close to Sandra, right? You met Louie? Oh, yes. I've spent time. She's stolen. 
a he's the precious. <laughs> you wanted to raise another we baby. We spent some time with Tim and Faith. Everyone associated with this movie, with this book, um, Sally Jenkins, who wrote this book. We, we never knew Sally before this. She's a member of our family now. I mean, we, we love these people. I mean, it's just, we have had nothing but a pleasurable journey since this started. And, and we're just lucky and blessed that it's turned out that way. So did you give Sandra any advice on how to raise an adopted son? No, she gives me advice how to raise my three children on a daily basis. I'm trying, she wants to take them to the acting side. I'm trying to get them on the football field. Yeah, Sean's already. So we're conflicting a little bit. <laughs> They're actually truly fighting yeah, over how we're going to raise Louie. We have a little bit of a conflict there. Well, you guys, you know, you are going to be facing an empty nest yeah. soon, Colin. Collins is out of college. Right. SJ's almost done. Yeah, he's a junior high in high school, yeah. So we got a couple more years, thank goodness. But Adopt again? Uh, you know, we're, we're leaving the door. Wherever God takes us, we're Well, you know, we didn't over. go out to adopt. That's right. We get a lot of credit for that, which is great. Keep giving us that. But truth is... You know, I tease people, we weren't really happy with the two we had. We sure weren't going after another one. But but, but really, we feel, and, and it's the only explanation that makes any sense, is we feel Michael was sent to us. And, and we were at least smart enough not to turn our backs on, on what we viewed as a miracle in our You know, house. one thing that shines through talking to you is that it, it's clear you all are shined by some joy. And, yeah, and, no and, 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 and I love the phrase, cheerful yeah. giving. How do people get that? Well, it, it, we, we feel it's an easy process. It, it comes from the Bible. It's in, it's in Corinthians, and it says, For God only loves the cheerful giver. So there's a difference between giving and cheerful giving. And, and our feeling is, and this is what we say in the book, is that it doesn't matter how big or small. If you're doing it with a happy heart, you'll do it again. And then once you realize how much fun it is, then you'll continually do it. If you don't like what you're doing, you'll stop. So if you're not a cheerful giver, it, it, you know God says he doesn't want it anyway, so why do it? And so our thing is go into it with a cheerful, the person that puts the quarter in the bucket with a happy heart is the one that we really are, you know, uh, really powered by. And that is the perfect message to end on. Thank you both very much. Thanks. Good luck with the book. Thank, Thank you.